Oh, it is game number one of our best of seven grand fighters in Tile Acto. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to join you here, boy. We got a full $1,500 as per rendezvous standard for the winners. Only 600 for the losers. And Reese Fox immediately opening the scoring in this great battle between the powers of Kachow against the peak of natural selection. And what better way to start the series of Kachow Dot with a Kachow goal explosion coming in the first 10 seconds. A 1-0 star already found for the Kachow Dot side. And who is on this roster, you may ask? Well, I hope you did, because or else I'm talking to nobody. On the Kachow Dot side, it is Reese Fox, Chausse, and Kado for the obviously time world champion, but more importantly, the one-time rendezvous champion himself. Indeed. I think one-time rendezvous probably goes at the top of the CV. Yeah. I don't know about you, boy. Kado. Certainly in recent times, or maybe we should just call him Kuchowdot, could use that accolade. It's maybe harsh to say, but certainly Drew has immediately met Payne, who has really been a man of the day so far, certainly for the Monkeys, immediately finds an equaliser. Yeah, they're not going to let this game go so easily in the head of Monkeys. They are here wanting to win. I don't believe any of these players have actually won a rendezvous just yet out of these six that have already gone by, whereas at least Gadop and Reese Fox have already found the one Ooh. victory. And I can't remember if Shawset was on that team as well. I'll have to go and look back at that. But the, the confusing thing with these friends teams is that they, they just change their rosters between each other. Between like Gross Noobs and Kachowdop in this event, they'll just keep swapping who plays with who for each event. It's hard to yeah. keep track of. It's like a little, um, you know, the 2v2 like mixed up thing that they're all doing now. It's like it's that, true. but just every yeah. tournament they just swap teams a little bit. At least, at least Europe sort of follows this interesting Venn diagram rule of nations yeah. where it's interesting to see where the overlaps are. It's not like NA where it's just American guy or Canadian guy sort of thing. And maybe, if you're lucky, you might get a Mexican player that we haven't seen one of them. The upper echelons of RLCS for far too long, sadly. I mean, she'll set. Sadly, very much French through and through. Maybe... Maybe we get NA players, make it a bit... I mean, what's the most successful NA player in Europe? I, I'm, trying to think one? A, I, I'm trying to think of an NA player that's made it in Europe. I don't I mean, think any of them came over here. I really. guess Drali is the closest we'll get to it, even though that's only because he was born in Canada, I believe. He was born in Canada, he is Moroccan, and he lives in Europe. So that's the biggest stretch of NA world. will definitely take him. If they manage to steal Gen G oh, from yeah, Europe, no. then they'll happily take anything. They're going to start calling me. America soon. So yeah, is it they left the European Union? They must be in America. <laughs> <laughs> you love that logic, but we've seen <laughs> we've seen the lower bar anyway. Speaking of a level bar, it's one-one right now, approaching half time. Smokes with a flip reset from the side wall, but still, unfortunately for him, not part of NA, so unable to collect the free win as he looks for a free ball. He will find it here off the side wall, direct clear, straight down centre. One to deal with the both teams, really. Not able to get on the end of it. But yet, Arju can challenge your set to lose touch, but no real wiggle room to be found. Now, over on the Kachowdop side, I would say the Beast Fox is the player that I'm kind of most looking out for. But we've seen for years, and I mean, especially for Kairop and Shawset, for years, what both of them can do. Since 2015, in fact, I think they've both been playing competitively. So, We've had plenty of time with them in the spotlight, but Reesebox has been more on the kind of more recent time, especially in this year, really coming into his element. Obviously, yeah. even more so in the last six months. And quite often, I would say he's looking like the best player on whatever team he's playing on at the time. So I think there's a lot of good potential to come from Reesebox in the future, and a name we could be seeing in the ROCS in due time. But I want to see how he develops. With Having the guidance of Grace, oh. like Kato and Shot set by his side. How will he utilize that? That's the big question for me. For sure. They certainly see the potential. It's on display, albeit unable to tuck away that big double touch opportunity. Really, Kachow drop. Kachow dot. There he is. Reese Fox again getting his second of the game, representing the passage of time as really two, three years ago. Seeing this team line up would very much have felt like the men in military uniforms around the corner and one of them in a clown suit. Uh, but that's really not the case anymore. Yeah, you see this team in like 2020 even, and you're thinking, who on earth are 
Kade off and Shawset playing with. This guy is literally what? nobody. Because he probably was in They got left with on Scrabble or something, and they just made a player out of it. He's down here looking for a hat trick for a free flip. He's not quite found the connection. It was well intercepted by Monkeys, who find themselves trailing once again. And it's for this man on that hat trick. Sunsu has been split into half, and it seems like Shawset and Kadob are just along for the ride now, fitting in his massive briefcase because Reef Fox is just carrying the team on his back at the moment. Three to one for the young French player, possibly Belson, I can't remember, but I'm going to call him French because that sounds better. Yeah, no, I agree. Kadob is pure, the whole roster. Nothing, nothing to be mixed upon. You have Argy, he's there. But he's not going to score. He gets the foot reset. And there it is. Easily defended at the front post. And we got to heat up into this grand final. Grand final is a journey. Best of seven. It's different. It's got prestige. And there are huge stakes on the line. Even financially. Even if you've already got many figures of winnings, as some of these players on the field certainly do, it's still all about that next paycheck for you as a player. And you never get tired of winning. Ah, yes, I am sure Kate up living paycheck to paycheck, fighting for this win. For sure. The team will blast the ball to the back of the net, makes it three to two, and makes it a possible comeback here for the monkeys. I will cut the career myself as well. Respawn is Belgian, but I'm still going to lie, and I'm going to call him French. Because what's came wrong with lying on the no. internet? Well, eventually the approximation of not in the EU becoming NA is slowly going to become not in France equals NA. So really. Reesbox is kind of NA when you think about it in a future approximation method. NA are NA does stand for not round. actually and then in bracket France. Exactly. But they, that's what the acronym stands for. Everyone knows that. The path of descent is saved by Reesbox. He's not actually French. He, he's Belgian. But Arjun, definitely not French. Definitely Italian. Cannot make anything of it. Running up to the side ball now as Smokes. He had Matane waiting centre. Good for Zeebo. But a great save by Reefbox. None other than Reefbox. Of course it's him making the save. They end the game. And a win for Kachowdop. But more importantly, that's just a win for Reefbox right there. And NA. The sort of case that would hold up in court, truly, as he puts over 600 points up there. It's a clean start for Kachowdop, who hit the ground running. Did they ever leave the ground? Well, they certainly did. Many aerial plays that game comfortable all over the field, but a well-fought battle from the Monkeys as well, who did outshoot them, but still it was too little too late at the end there as we head towards game two. Will Kachowdop turn into a metaphorical steam engine, or will they not? What similarities do they bear to, to a steam, steam engine? That's a, that's a very philosophical question, and I also want to add to that is what player on Kachowdot most represents Pitbull, the famous rapper, and what that car also would also question. be very similar to him? Because I think I mean, he is probably the most steam definitely engine definitely looks more like Pitbull yeah. than Chaucet. Now, of but, all the people on the planet, I'm not sure many look less like Pitbull than Chaucet. I have a counter-argument. I feel like Chaucet is closer to being an actual Pitbull than Kadop is. <laughs> That is valid. You know, jury, I, I think, will appreciate that if you present the evidence. But frankly, the evidence is implied as smoke for the ground pinch. It can really end all ground pinches. But it's over the bar, so it doesn't matter. It's nil nil. And we play on game two. Now, Shaw set, potentially Pitbull, potentially not, but definitely a sock. Unable to get anything onto the back of the net. Matin. 50 50 in the midfield denied well. Take that ball right to K Dop's arms. Come smokes. No reset. No lose possession. Slow pace in the back line, but Kachowdok are more than happy to do so. They are controlling this very, very well, just allowing any chance actually onto it and just passing this ball back and forth between the two corners. Beatbox finally upfield with Kadoff and Chaucet leading the way. Ooh. And Chaucet coming out of nowhere, putting the card that he made popular. 1 to 0 start. And it's Chaucet to get one on the board. Yeah. Kadok may have controlled it with open arms. Shawset may not have arms, but he's certainly got his paws on that ball and finished it into the temporarily open net. It was a limited time window, but he certainly bought a ticket and got in there for that 1-0 advantage. Tries for the infield cut, but Matane shuts it off. A little double commit later. Maybe 
that's all the breathing room that the monkeys need to find themselves a counter attack but Kadok getting physical contact on the interception it's overcooked is the pass from smokes though quite in front enough the trajectory too difficult to work out and another counter attack here Kadok screeching downfield and Kuchow it's 2-0 no, I think Kadok and Trust Him are listening to our last game because they were not happy with us not giving them credit. Yeah. Slicing that ball to the top corner of the net. Kadok makes it 2 to 0 off the assist from Chaussette. It's Kadok and Chaussette, the ancient duo, I will call them. Not because they played together for a long time, just because they're old. Simple as that. But they're really putting this game into their control now, saying, Free Spots, we can also play. We, we have some skill. We're pretty good at this game. I'm a world champion, says Kadok. Chaussette wants to say that, but he never made it that far. He got dream hack. Yeah. It's easy to forget that Chaussette does not have a world championship belt to his name. Weird to think about that as in amongst the very extensive collection of French crown jewels there are in terms of players. This one, one to forget, perhaps. Uh, it's a bit of a royal blunder from Kadok. Routine backboard read. Finds himself not on the backboard soon enough. A simple punish to slice the advantage in half. Else, who's a one? The scoreline quickly becomes. The monkeys hunting for goal number two, hunting for that equaliser. They're unable to find it in that first game. It's a whole new time. There's so much on the clock as well. Three minutes still mm -hmm. to go. A little bit dicey there in front of net, but they don't get punished. I don't know why Matane went for that ball because it certainly wasn't his. Beast box up field. Let me set a ten. He takes it low. Ooh. The pass to Kedop is sublime. Beautiful. Incroyable. And it was all Kadok. Look at that. There, right there. Could not have done it without Kadok. Kachow, 3-1. That, that, that was quite the pass. Oh, beautiful pass. Certainly. We'd be happy to see that from the side of Kachow's up. Everyone except the Monkeys players and the Monkeys fans, maybe. Off the side of the ball will roll. Reese Fox beaten through that ball. It's a monstrous pinch, but Smokes, he had the read. But Kadok's already there waiting for it. Shaw sets up. Denying the shot by Matane. Great save by Chaussette. Oh, he's Archer though. Into centre, denied by Kato. The launch up field, Respots gets on that. And Respots, what on earth are you doing? Unbelievable slice. The drive straight down and Reese. <laughs> what on earth? Well, how that? It's 4 to 1. Respawn has got his first of the game on the board, but it was probably the best goal we've seen all game. The pass is really made to Kado for the last one. An incredible pass as well. This kid has certainly got some talent. Now, maybe not in reality in 2019 good, but certainly up there. That is true. He probably was still in Challenger Elite back then, I would suspect. But when you score a goal like that, does it really matter? Frankly, it, it makes you raise the question. Why are game breakers not a thing from old school FIFA Street, you know? Why, why, why are they not a thing? They can just end the game immediately. Even if you're down 5-0, a goal so ridiculous that it just terminates the timer and you get the game on the board because uh, frankly uh, that... that format? Yeah, you know what? It's a new format we get. We're going to get a new tournament format where if you're down a lot, just start going for freestyles and see what you can do. And if it's good enough, you just win. I mean, unironically hey, worth a try. Twitch rivals, that sounds something right up your alley. That is, that I'll, is I'm true. Selling, I'm selling you the idea now, Twitch rivals. Some sort of skate sort of style challenge, but then obviously that's kind of like some setting and copying the sort of difficulty. That's very difficult. And that's not the sort of goal you are going to see replicated. Famous last words, of course, from Reese Fox here on Forbidden Ten. But if he wants to score another one of them this, this grand final, then he can be my guest. But I don't think that's quite going to happen as paid up tries to add a double touch. So the very decorated selection of goals we've had here. Not able to find the mark. Argy likewise denied by Chaussette. I feel kind of bad so far this series because I don't think we've talked much about monkeys and what they have been able to achieve. Ciao. Quite simply because they don't have as good a name as Kachowdop and also because they have just looked second class in this series. They have not looked close to Kachowdop which you know, say that two years ago and with Kadop and Shaw setting the pitch and fair enough, but saying that in 2023 where, you know, Kadop and Shaw set and Respots are superiorly outclassing a team of Batane, Arjun and Smokes and 
I'm excited to see what kind of how this oh, continues. Because yeah. that's goal number five. This game's already over. And Kachowdop aren't slowing down. Indeed, they are not. Oh, and I'm afraid bad news travels fast. And it has been nothing but bad news for Atane and the Monkeys gang so far this series. It's really old money is this roster from Kachowdop. And they are rolling in it until they get headbutted in the face there off that kickoff. But Atane will look to punish spectacularly. Even so, again, one of the with the upside down redirects this game. That, the, the, the trend that we're going to see that going into game three, I'm not so sure, but I can say that it couldn't have been much of a better start for the French roster. Only for Raju to put a little asterisk on it here. He got one to close the game off, makes it a 5 2 scoreline, but 5 2, 5 1, what difference does it make? With two seconds left to go, the game's already done, it's going to be 2 0 to Gachowdop, and lucky for Monkeys. It's a best of seven. They have a bit more time to recuperate and get themselves back into the series because so far, not looking good for them. Certainly could be looking better. Reese Fox managing to finally convince himself to take a bit of a backseat, only putting up about 400 points in that game. Kachowdop, you know, proving the namesake beautifully in that second game. Monkeys, I mean, let's throw this back a few months to... This could have been, say, an RLCS regional. I mean, Kadop and Chaucet, what's the likes of Solary, very, very capable of reaching these regional, regionals and playing sort of mid-pack EU teams like the Monkeys with prospects of sneaking towards a major. And yet we saw so many times that they weren't able to do that. And I feel like it's because of their potential to lose two teams that would have been necessarily at the more bottom end of the pack of European regionals and it's slip ups the likes of which we're seeing here where they don't take control of a series they find themselves in the passenger seat and that is really I think for the monkeys what has kept them in that sort of limbo unable to ever really become that major contending team it feels like almost a shame for Arjun Batane who of course potentially peaked in terms of their their ranking in Europeans elite during the yeah. COVID era. But for Smokes as well, he's potentially kept them there, but equally kept them in this limbo where it's always with a pinch of salt, this success that has the potential of downfall with it. Very much falling fast in this best of seven grand finals. Down 2-0, still needing to make a point. And they can't really come into this game plan with, you know, let's try and suppress Race Fox and you know, play off of that. Let's deny this and the opportunity to shine because we're starting to see Kadov and Chaucet really come into their element and take control of their series as well. Now finally Monkeys have some substantial pressure on the net. That shot from Arjo, uncharacteristic. I'm expecting a bang to the top corner. But he is setting that slow, he's sledding that low and he needs to be found for the defenders. Uncharacteristic I would say for the Italians. Yeah, very difficult though to get that ball past Chaucet who showcases some great Rabbit defending, very canine-like, if you may, as Kadok controls. The force a fantastic 50 through two players. The man has never, ever lacked conviction as he finds short set towards the center, forcing a desperate block out of smoke. He does very well to get strong contact. His ball and car very much in the way of the goal. Short set running it away. Again, looking for the brute force strategy, but missing out on the corner boost could stifle the offense. Kado, three time world champion. Pass over to Chaucet. On average, the side of, you know, Kachaudo as a one world champion pair player. Okay, that's just, that's kind of just cheating though. I mean, like, like yes. That, that's yeah. not fair. On average, I mean, they're all world champions. Reesbox is not an average world champion. He, he, he potentially, you know, potentially a, a world champion of the future, but in the uh, in, in the great line of inheritance when it hey, comes to the crown of French-speaking players, he, he's quite far down uh, that food chain. I'm going to quote this in one year time when we see yeah, no, Kedok, it, it, Chaucet I... and Reece Fox winning the RLCS <laughs> 2024 World Championship. <laughs> I mean, there's a universe. Beating the monkeys in the grand is. final. Okay, well that, that that is now a lot even more universes away. But again, 
Anything's possible. That is assuming that they, they play together next season of these two respective rosters. And really, why not? Over the course of this evening, both very much showcasing more than glimmers and spectacles of ability. But I'm afraid only one team will be coming out of this evening feeling satisfied with their take home. Even if $600 for the runners up is certainly plenty more than evening's worth. Back to the corner. Head up. The pass made by Smoke should be spot to catch it. Head up. Quick to receive the fake out from Respot. Leaves the ball perfect for Chaussette. Off to the backboard now. It'll be Smokes for the clearance. But Kedop just patiently waits for a boom back the other end. Respot is flying high and fast. But him and Matei will both just fly past the ball and go their separate ways. Off to the backboard. Caught by Smokes. Chaussette getting chased by Arju. To no success. 50 50 denied. Only two minutes left to go. And we remain scoreless for game at number three. In my eyes. I'm sure you agree, Tyler. So this is a must-win game for the Monkeys because yeah. the reverse sweep of the best of seven when the series has looked as it has so far just doesn't seem possible. Mm, that is my concern. While frying high is legal in some countries, you have to be careful to see which of these two teams is going to be able to cook up the go-ahead goal. The Smokes only really able to create on the defense. He showcased great defense at that. That player really known. It, I feel like in terms of his raw ability he's been kept far more muffled on that defensive end as Reese Fox looks to probe and prod again argue for the fantastic response at forcing back the whole team though of Kachaldov only for a side flip from Arju to lose valuable time momentum Kadop buying the challenges and again the monkeys find themselves under the cosh in this boat of field denied well but here goes Arju off to the ceiling, caught by Chaussette. Reese Fox dunked on by Smoltz. It might slip on by, and that's it well. Under the crossbar, it cannot be caught. 1-0 for the Monkeys with 44 seconds left. They might have a game in their hands. A random dunk floating into the top shelf, completely catching Kachow Dop off guard. And Smokes may not have been allowed on the offense, as I was saying, but he can somehow make defending into a shot, into his goal. He was defending from the front and he was fully rewarded for his efforts and into the final 30 seconds, potentially first lead of the series, I believe, for the Monkeys, who may look to extend it if they can find the flick that he's looking for. Sadly not. Are due to the ceiling for the reset. Potentially only one remaining good chance in Kachowdok at this point. Andrew Reesfort denied by Smokes up in Matane, he will not get the touch, Kadok take it low, Arjun narrowly avoids that demo by Chaussette, just getting hit a bit too late, Reesfort to centre, no one to receive, one last try here for Chaussette to keep this ball up, so Reesfort said no Chaussette, I want to play more games, I'm going to send you flying. And flying. They are. It's not the fastest of takeoffs in this grand finals, but it is an absolutely critical one. And six saves was the tally by Smokes, who grinded out that victory in that third game. Like I say, it was not pretty at times and in result, but it is a critical result indeed for the Monkeys who get going. Slow and stem that bleeding. Kachow Dot shut out and very much now asked the questions because. As much as the Monkeys could tie this up 2-2 and make it even, that would suddenly make them the favourites with a two-game win streak on the bounce. Kachowdop, I feel like, especially at this level of prestige, I've seen Kadop and Chaussette go cold once that momentum stops rolling. They've got the experience getting it started again, boy, but I mean, if oh, I was yeah. a Kachowdop fan, I, I would just be a little... I mean, it's only one game, but only one absolutely game. be a little concerned right now. And there's always time to be apprehensive, and I think that would be in Game 4, where things can very quickly become a series with no advantage, or a series at back-to-match point for Kachowdop. Game 4 is very pivotal for their success, because things can spiral, things can kind of run out of control, especially on the side of Kachowdop. But, on the other hand, they have a player like Kadop on their team. Keep in mind, Kadop, since RLCS Season 3 all the way to RLCS X, made it to every single Grand Final. Yeah. Like, Except one, which was the spring major when he got top eight. But then he won the, cha the RLCS X Championship after that. So, like, he just always got top two. If there's someone who's consistently can play under pressure, it is K-Dop. And, of course, in recent time, that may not have been the exact case. But he has that pedigree to him where, you know, 
We're going to go full anime mode if he digs deep within himself. He might find that key yeah. to success once again. Yeah. And I just forgot where he, lost, where he left the entire, entire key chain when it comes to winning, really, because there is nobody with more keys in possession than him. All of them, truly, to the kingdom. No more player in Rocket League history is as winning as him. Reese Fox to the backboard. Forced that block out of Arch, denying Haydock a tap in finish. He would also happily have collected as Smokes finds himself collecting a ball, but unable to put power on it. Hesitated for just a moment, and that's what allowed Reese Fox to get back on the goal line. Very fortunate as well for Kachotok, as you said, that could have easily been followed up upon. The ball touch wasn't firm by Shaw set, but a slight collect onto Smokes' car was all it really took to slow him down and just allow him that follow through. and. Give time for the defense to get back in position. That's a good chance for Arjo denied once again. Kachaudov are not finding any defensive chances that they were really dominating with in game one and two. And now we're playing a lot more on the back foot, playing a lot more trying to survive for as long as possible rather than controlling the game. Yeah, you can see Monkey is far more comfortable with time to take the ball up their backboard and beckon the challenge. Sure set, ceiling down. That was marvelous technique. If he could just got there half a second earlier, not able to truly punch down from above the ball, but really, it would have been a moment, a glimpse there as sure set also, that player we see on the defensive end far more often than not, it's nobody on the defensive end at all, as Bataille and the Monkeys will collect a 1-0 lead. Massive overcommit, the, the furthest back player on the side of Kachaudop wasn't even at the halfway line, they were further ahead of that. No one's making it back in time to save that ball. Monkeys want to up off a pure error from Kachaudov. They're just overcommitting when they have no reason to, to be totally honest. Think about the two goals that are currently, as it stands, putting the Monkeys level in the series, and you think, huh, wow, they really do be winning two games like this, as it is two unsavory 1-0 scorelines that they currently find themselves in possession of. They put the first away and they convert the second. Kachaudop, look, an aggressive, hopeful goal, playing with so much passion, the likes of which you would expect. Monkeys, really so. I don't care how the goals come, as long as I can control this and stop one going in the other end. He's bought some time with his prime defensive touch with a double commit. Danger isn't gone just yet, albeit Patain punts the ball downfield. A glance off the ceiling, a second one here as it comes back oh. the other way, but Kachaudop, Unable to find any success with the brute force dunk method. A good attempt to pass right there, but denied well. Arjo to center, Matein off the bar. Kato bumped off of that ball, but here goes Chaussette upfield to Kato. Denied well by Smokes, and Reesebox has to take his time. He does not want to overcommit. Finally challenges, but denied well by Matein. Sent upfield, two minutes to go. It still remains at 1 0 in favor of the Monkeys. Kachaudop, they are just not finding opportunity. They are not developing on the offensive side. Only two shots taken in this game. And both have been, you know, nothing special to be totally honest, leaving a lot to be desired. Here's Kadop now, denied well once again by Matein. Monkeys have stepped up big time in game three and subsequently game four. What is opportunity as the Oasis has it dried up once more as resource? Resource? Trying to find the resources is Reese Fox. He didn't manage to do just that. k with the free jump. Very skeptical. Didn't manage to get back down to make the all important block. Comes now patiently off that corner wall. Matane really, really wanting the challenge to come his way. And he successfully navigates that ground 50 50. Albeit Arju dropping the ball just a little bit. And k is able to fire downfield. But it's all hopeful without all that much precision. He may look to try and challenge from the back wall, but he's beaten out by Smokes. Now, Reese Fox again looking to try and wriggle his way through some defenders in the corner, but Matane is just so patient. He gets the lead. It's late on in regulation as he, and he just simply forces the opponent to axe first. Here goes Reese Fox now, past one, off to the corner. He fakes out the oncoming defender, gets it into centre. Here's Kadoff to bang! Chaussette is doing acrobatics around that ball, but Kadoff is there to finish. And there it is, popped out. Maybe a little bit late for bonfire night, but the bang was supplied. And Kachow it is for 1-1, 25 on the clock. An all-important equaliser. How critical will that goal prove to be? Terrible time for people who 
don't want a French team to win, but a great time for everyone else who wants to see K Dog and Chaussette and Reed Spots really play their absolute A game. 1 1, 10 seconds to go. K Dog will get a pass. Reed Spots off to the side. A chance for a last second destroyer of hope, realistically. But it's Arjo to control that ball away, get it down to the ground, and to overtime we will go. How will this one end? He is uh, spectacular, is the word I'm going to use for the last. Smoke fill, flip reset, recovery. The bump is being hunted upon, but she'll set, navigate the challenge, finds the challenge of his own, and keeps this overtime ticking. An all important defensive play. How worthy will it end up being as Arju plays the ball off the ceiling for Matain to deliver the double that paid off. Fantastic save, equal to it. He goes Reese Fox. Pass made in to centre. A weird catch by Archer, but he plays off it very, very well. Kate up into centre now. Matain getting a clearance out of the shot set to try and cause some damage off his own. Here comes Reese Fox off the ceiling. Can't get a reset, can't get a dunk. He will keep the possession in the side of Gachowdop. It's Kate up. He's going so Everyone's just taking their chance. They're just taking turns. And now it's Shawsette's turn to go by himself. 50-50 into centre. He'll have to leave that ball. He's got no boost. But here comes K-Dot once again into centre. Reese Box is too far back. But here comes Shawsette now for a chance of his own. But now here comes K-Dot. But now Ooh. here comes the defender finally getting that ball away. Smokes adding another pristine save to this series collection. But what offensive play from Kachaudov, who are once again in the driver's seat, making the first move. Kadok sprays the ball across to the corner and it takes time for the monkeys and resources for them to go and fetch and try and wriggle their way off of this orange side of the field, but they're not being allowed it as Kadok falls from the ceiling. It's an absolutely boomingly powerful touch that does nothing more than keep the pressure up, but pressure is indeed still remaining as he will put the ball back into the mixer but the monkeys do start to break out breathing room achieved as smoke is, is now first in the midfield and kadok has to play the ball off his own backboard the tides chains once again will the tables turn once oh. again without even a touch arju does just that after two minutes of overtime and it'll be two two and what a weird goal to end it arju flip reset doesn't have it actually fakes out shot set he expects that touch to be made, but Monkeys, with two minutes exactly of overtime, win the game, and more importantly, they tie up the series. 2-2, two, two, and another strange ending to an overtime. I mean, I don't know about you, boy, but th this has Game 7 written on it oh, to yeah. me all over. Unless the Monkeys can go straight through with four in a row. I mean, Kadop just likes seeing his name in lights, doesn't he? He's going to make sure we get there. Even if they were to win next game, it'll be a horrible overtime loss in the sixth. I mean, I'm just, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I mean, Kadop with a strong performance, you could say, at the top of the scoreboard and yeah. highest scoring player in the lobby, but one goal from seven shots is, is a double-edged sword. And frankly, uh, there was nothing sharp about the finish to end that game. No, certainly not. I mean, having that many chances, having that few goals, it's not always a bad thing, but I think with the opportunities that were presented to KDOP, some of the shots maybe could have been better. They could have been a bit more powerful. They maybe could have been less shots for him, more passings to his teammates. But my big theory here is that KDOP just wants to show, you know, young Reese Fox, like, like, like taking his kids for like a little, a little journey, a little... Taking like his kid to his old school and go like, look, look at my name up in the rafters. I'm there. Oh, three times I'm up there. Look he's at like that. The, the, the parent. That yeah, is yeah. Way he's like too over enthusiastic at the Sunday League football, and they're like, I still got it in me. Let me on. He's trying to crack the jersey on and run onto the field. Difference being, Kadop, well, he always was on the field. He never left. It's certainly where he belongs as we head down to Game Five. But the series certainly won't be decided here. Dead Eye Canyon, sure set, floats one powerfully as I find this always a slightly disconcerting map to play on. I don't know about you, boy, but in terms of just spotting the walls, usually the mesh is more, vis more visible. Yeah, it's a very clear mesh. It's very hard to see. And maybe the players have that same issue as well. I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they're way better than... Well, I, definitely I mean, me. Better. You can... No, no, no. They are far better than me, boy, boy. <laughs> don't be so generous to me. I, I, I'm just saying good player or not it, it certainly takes oh, eyesight to an extent instinct can only carry you 
so far. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you do take put blindfolds on these players, they really, really would struggle, albeit Reese Fox doesn't struggle to get that one on target. I think we've got a new tournament idea right there. Fully blindfolded <laughs> pros only. The audio, the audio cues is so, so, or so important. we get the coaches involved, the coach tells them what to do. Co-drivers, where they are allowed yeah. to, like, lift their eyes. I, I'm sure that must have been tried sometime. It's very, very difficult, and it fully relies on the audio, as far as I'm concerned. Still, it still disturbs, disturbs me when I hear about some pros that play without game audio. I mean, I'm, that, not, that I'm not a pro, but I also play with no game audio. That's what, it takes such confidence to just, you know, never hesitate, therefore. I mean, I guess it makes you not hesitate because you're not worried about someone coming from out of your FOV because you can't hear them coming anyway. Yeah, Reedsport certainly isn't worried because he seems to have a full control of the game. The pass into center almost finding the back, to the back of the net. Smokes, not very good control, but he actually recovers pretty well from it. Here's Chaucet, almost back in the glory days with that touch. Arjut, passes there for Kadop. Reedsport's going the distance one-on-one. -on -one. He'll get it past. But Arju has to ruin the fun for him, gets that save just in time. k will take it low. k tries to find the two-shot set, but to no avail just yet. These Fox may have felt like using control of this game, as you mentioned, but for me, game one feels like a long time ago. But certainly, games one and two are called back here with a lead. For Kachaldot, there will be no awkward 1-0 deficit that they open up a game with because they're moving themselves in front after simply exposing the open net. And Arjun just has to take a risky dive and Chaucet is all too familiar of what to do just there. Sends it to the top of the net, sends it under the crossbar. A 1-0 start for Kachaldot. They have a lead. They haven't had one of these since game two. Maybe they'll finally win a game once again. It's Kade up upfield. The pass to be made to Reed Fox not connected upon. The shot set. Controlling the midfield well. Finds it over to Kade up. Here comes Reed Fox. He's got boost to play with, but Matane is a little bit quicker. Better position for that challenge. Shot set good 50. He needs some help. Reed Fox might be the man to do it, but he flies past that ball. Actually fakes out the oncoming attacker, keeps him back. Here comes Kade up from the heavens. Diving down for that save. Reese Fox up. Dove up did Matain to get the interception though, and it could be an all important one as the monkey's downfield, though he's unable to pull a very awkward trigger to get that shot away. Very, very much unhand or finger shapes as he had to get impeccable timing to even make contact with the ball, let alone get it on target and find that timing. He did not. We stay at a 1 0 scoreline. The team in blue. Kachowdot, Kadop up, patient pass down to Reese Fox, but just a little under hit and he couldn't quite work the angle. Close but a good idea nonetheless. I'm happy to see that coming out from Kachowdop. Arjun attempt to clear denied by Reese Fox. He's hoping for Chaucet to be able to follow, but he's Ooh. caught off guard. Kadop is almost sliding past that ball, but he's able to cancel his momentum, get that save. Another risky save having been made once again. We're seeing a lot of scrambling coming out in the Kachowdop back line and it's starting to make me very worried for them. And they defend this rare lead as of the past 15 minutes or so. We've got Arji squirming out of the corner pass. Kadov getting past short set as well. And just like that, wriggling downfield, he makes it 1-1. One, one. one a piece in his Arju. Oh, and he's lonesome. Doesn't need help from no one. Makes it one apiece. But one minute to go and a tied up series two apiece. A very important game because the winner will head to match point. This is getting worrisome here for Gachado. I'm not convinced of their defense. I'll be totally honest, Tylato. It has looked incredibly shaky this game and they've got away with murder many a time. Time. Any more crimes to be committed? We'll have to see because Kado very much cleanly beaten out by the Italian. A Argy, demo. But a demo. Nothing clean about that. It'll be 2 1. She'll set. We'll get the credit. But Kadop with the removal. And look how quick that demo comes. Chaucet is, the ball even is still not even past the halfway line before that demo comes from Kadop. Arjo is so convinced that that save was made by his teammate that he's not in position. He doesn't expect Kadop to be flying for a demo when the ball is nowhere near it. But my oh my, a great bit of work from Kadop and Chaucet, of course, to get the credit. Two to one, 30 seconds left to go. And it's Kadop up to respawn. And Reesbox onto the backboard. He can follow this and he can most certainly score it.
It's a long distance double from the Belgian. One clean flip. It's whiffed on by Arju and Smokes who cannot deal with the power and pace. They couldn't get to it in time and that placement is good enough for a 3-1 scoreline and surely will help Grant Kachaudot their third game on the board in this best of seven grand finals. It's the rendezvous seven. Ultimately, I think that makes this the most important. Seven. Better than the game seven. It will be so granted they have one more game the force of to decide such a thing. Three to one for game number five. Kachaudop take it. They take match point. Three to two the series score. It could easily go the way of monkeys. It is not safe just yet. Now we're testing our theory because this is what we hypothesized yeah. after games three and four. Would Kadop simply allow Reese Fox to see his names on Champions Field just one more time? Because Reese Fox certainly hasn't seen it enough times in the countless thousands of ranked games that he's seen, of which a respectable fraction will have been on Champions Field. And certainly, from the moment you boot the game, you're probably quite familiar with the name KDOT. But can, like you say, Boyo, can he add Rendezvous Champion to that extensive CV that, if printed on paper, would be quite harmful for the environment, I would think? That is the question. Hey, wait a minute. Don't disrespect KDOT, but it'd be two-time Rendezvous Champion. That's and true. That's, that's an important true. distinction yeah. to make. That's true. And that takes more rank than a one. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I mean, it'd be two time for this whole team because it was Reese Fox and Shaw Set who were on that same team that won. They're looking to be the first ever full team of two time rendezvous champions. Yes, that's what I'm thinking because they're usually the rosters are changing too much. So, really, I mean, KDOP was. Uh, he wasn't Kadop, the first, Shawset, he wasn't the the first the two time, but he was technically the tied second. Yeah. So it's good enough. But you can be the first two time here alongside his teammates, Shaw Set and Reese Fox. What more actually to add? When are we getting those in game titles? Two time rendezvous champion. That's what I want to see. He does get the three time world champion. Yeah, who cares? Turbo's got four time. I want two time rendezvous champion because no one else has that one. Oh. Maybe. Arju would like a piece of it. Needs to. Uh... Get himself a first on the board, of course, as he gets himself a first after this flip reset finish attempt by Smokes. He's there to pick up the pieces as Reese Fox free jumping a little bit too early in a fluster. And suddenly Kachow Dot brought right back down to reality. Unless, of course, it's a master plan by Kadop to go to Champion Steel. I'm so convinced that's his master plan. He's one thing it's like a little inspiration moment for Reese Fox. He's gonna tell him he loaded into that lobby. The 3 2 1 starts and he goes Reese Fox. See my name up in those banners. He says it's all in French, and you know, he's not going to say it in English, but weird. But he said, Reese Fox, see all those names in those banners? My name's up there three times, and one day you're going to be joining me up there. Not, not, probably not the same team. You know, I'm going to retire in like a year. But you'll be joining <laughs> me up there, Reese Fox. I don't know about that. That's his inspirational hey, hey, message. Hey, <laughs> it's inspirational messages. I'm going to leave you. It's what I'm going to leave you. Say. And you're on your I own, I don't kids. believe it. You're on I, your don't own think, kids. I don't know if Kedop's ever going to retire. I, I'm pretty sure he's still going to be playing. He'll perpetually play when he sh When he's able to collect his pension, that he's probably not actually really surmised because he's probably not had to work at it, a normal quotations job. But by that age, I think he'll still be playing. You know, he he'll have made um, up an RLCS. There might not be an RLCS. Yeah, Anchor to a link. He'll still be playing same. on Gotham City, grinding his way through the bubble scene. <laughs> I still, I'll still have faith the whole way through. That is, yeah, at that point I think we'll be pushing it a little too far that you still have faith. But faith? Yeah, maybe. No, I, no, I would respect it. But I can't say I'd see it. We're here in game six. And the Monkeys, as aforementioned, trying to force a final seven in the rendezvous. Number seven. They've got a chance here. It's the ball uncontested. Off the backboard. In fact, it was a trap. Kachow, short set makes it 1-1. Kachow indeed. They're not the dot getting this one, it is Shawset and Reese Fox linking up perfectly. The Kachow comes up and it's Shawset to get the goal. One a piece, three minutes to go. This game's That's not going to be as easy as Monkey's hoped. Such a depressing goal to concede. Yeah. Effectively a whiff off the backboard and you get completely baited by it. But you find yourself with two players in the same place at the same time facing the same way and you can't act surprised when they're both taken out by the same play. It didn't have to be spectacular. My goodness, 
Is it effective? Into the final three is a very, very confident pass down to Joseph, played by Reese Fox. A lot of trust in that play. Does it pay off? No, it's because paid off. He's unable to convert from the sharp angle. I don't think he realized the time that he had. Yeah, that's the moment you want your teammates to start screaming time and, you know, for no really apparent reason, because you're not going to react, but you just want them to say it and hope for the best that you realize that, you know, you have a bit of time in that oh. ball. You do not have to rush it and bang it against the wall. Unfortunately for Kadok, he's exactly had to have it ended up. But still, the skill remains one apiece. And match point in the way of Kachowdok. They have that little bit of leeway. But did he really want to risk the Game 7? Like, ignoring the oh, inspirational definitely. message you're going to send to Reese Fox? <laughs> definitely. I got to pull him in. I mean, she'll say this here. Playing it to Kadok, who looks to try and follow into the bottom corner. Tough shot, but no boost. Well saved by Arju, but far more dubious, I feel like. For the monkeys when they come forward with so many unexpected defensive minor whiffs coming out of Kachowdok. No whiff on that shot, but it is beaten out by the defense as they fire downfield. Now do the monkeys. It's another whiff. There you are. At some point they're gonna predict one of these and collect themselves an easy finish. That one wouldn't have been that granted. It's a little flip reset, I should say. Musty flip pass towards center. Could have been a nice Spectacular finish, but not to be into the final 90. Still 1-1, one, one, and one goal could end it all. Still 1-1, one, one, still anyone's game. Big demo on shot set, but Reese Fox saves that ball away, gets it out of harm's way. It's Arju. Going all on his lonesome, caught by shot set. Here comes Kato to get involved. The backboard now, here's Reese Fox. Shot saved by Smokes. Shot set's not going to slow down on these rotations back into centre. Arju. Can't find that connection as Respawn gets a free clear uncontested for quite some time now. Quick reset past the shot set. But well by Matein and Kadop is you know, a little bit of a scramble there. Kadop nearly on target. Double commit. They wanted a finish, but it could have all just gone back the other way if not for sure set. Recovering in time to get the ball out of the goal mouth, but for how long? This bit again tantalizing Farge who, who pokes to the backboard only for Reese Fox to get a very, very effective clearing distance on that ball and nearly for the shot indeed. It's back and forth end to end into the final 20. And still Kachowdok hold on with a chance for a winner. It's not for Arju getting across to the front post. There's a good bump attempt in the defender, but Arju stays strong. And now Arju down the other end might just close it oh. on out himself. Saved in the line by Kate up away by Sorset. Here comes Smoltz off the ceiling, trying to avoid the overtime, trying to send it to game seven here. Zero seconds on the clock, and Matane keeps it high. He's going for the touch, he's going for the angle. Sorset disabled, he let it touch the ground. Garger catch it, no, he cannot. The overtime we go, Tyler One goal to win the tournament for Kachowdok. And this could be it. It could be open for Kadok to find the double. He places it down, but is unable to get the ball on target and sure set temporarily the last man between scoring the goal and conceding one. Choose not to take the bait. Indeed, that's what happened. Matein shot on net again. Double commit the nerves at an all-time high. We call for a game seven very early on. Will we be so granted it? It's Arjo to the backboard. Matein, he's got a reset. He's bringing it into centre. And Kadok's waiting patiently on that backboard, ready to defend well. So I'll say it's a wasted touch. The smokes it will go, and Matein upfield. Good sustained pressure from the monkeys. They're just not finding that finishing touch. It's Arjo to centre. He's not going to boost the ball for a demo. Shaw so set the save and Reese Fox away. Finally, a moment to bereave for Kachowdo. And he'll take full advantage and attack off their own, denied well by Matein. I don't even know what I'm watching. Kachowdok incapable of taking time on the defense, but it doesn't seem to matter. It's worked for them, and able to get forward anyway. Matein springs up to make that goal line save as Reese Fox for the double drops down oh, and Reece finishes Fox. it. What a better way to end the series in a Reese Fox double touch. He ends the series in spectacular fashion off the pass from Chaussette. There's good reason why we said he might just be the star player on this team. And he has certainly proved it all serious long, but my oh my, Kadop and Chaussette, they stepped up big time when it mattered. Absolutely. A very pleasant finish as well. Double touchdown to win not just the series, but the tournament. $1,500 going 
to Kachaldop. And the monkeys still show what they've got. It, was, it really was a great final, yeah. boy, and a great tournament to boot. Just a great finish. Reese Fox, is he the main character? Is he the main rendezvous character? We make the rendezvous documentary. Reese Fox is who we'll focus on. Officially now the two time rendezvous champion alongside Kadop and Chaussette. The first of its kind, and we've not got many rendezvous to go, so it could be the only one. I'll have to wait and see as time goes on. But my, he, oh my. Could he, a could he be the three one. time? That's why I want to say time. The three time. There's time for that. I could see it. I mean, do you want to deny Reese Fox being the three time? You should really sign up for the rendezvous eight because we'll be back here next week as well. Are you going to be there, boy? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Actually, no, it's my birthday. I, sh- I probably shouldn't. <laughs> you should indeed spend your birthday watching the rendezvous because this has been fantastic. At least that's what I think. I know we've had a great time bringing you the action oh, yeah. here on the rocket. Shout out to Paul, our producer, and our socials team as well. I would like to tell you that it's a team, but really, it's a one man team. Kai is, is doing the heavy lifting on the back end. So shout out to him as well. And as much as we've had a great time bringing you the action, we hope that you've had a great time enjoying it as well. So until next time, we'll see you then.